Well, today I'm going to show you how we pour our bucktail jigs. We make our own uh, bucktail jigs. And I got several molds. And this is the one we'll probably use today. It's a, you know, it goes from half ounce, three eight, five sixteenth. That's what we'll probably pour. You know, we use the most of that size. It goes right down to one thirty second, but we don't use those little ones. Now, sometimes you gotta adapt your mold to the hooks you like to use. So I don't know where you can see this, where I cut it out right here because the hooks were too long for the mold. So sometimes you have to do that. Well, while I'm pouring these jig heads, I'll be wearing this face shield so that lead don't pop in my face and some heavy gloves. And I got good ventilation. I got both garage doors open and that gives me plenty of ventilation. And the lead's clean. I take uh, scrap lead and make ingots out of it and I use the ingots and put them in the pot. So we got pretty fairly clean lead so you don't get very much smoke. So what we're going to do, we're going to pour them, then clean them up and paint them. Then we'll be tying the uh, deer hair onto them. So let's get to pouring them. I made this small uh, ladle years ago. And it's made out of, this is an end, end cap for uh, pipe railing. I used to have a welding shop and we made uh, pipe railing. So this is what you use for the end cap. And I just heated up a bit of spout into it. And it works out real well for uh, pouring the, these uh, jig heads. I'll let them cool for a second. That cooled pretty quick. There's not very much lead in there. You got some nice shiny uh, jig heads. Well, I have to take my gloves off to put the hooks in. I can't pick them up with those big clumsy gloves. You can see there where I had to cut the mold out for these hooks to fit in here. So sometimes you've got to modify your mold to fit the hooks you have or the hooks you want to use. I don't know why I mentioned it, but this is uh, what they call a do it mold, and they make pretty good molds. And this particular mold makes a really nice jig head. They're really smooth. Sometimes they're, for some reason, they're a little rougher. But the fish don't care. If you're making them for yourself and not selling them, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to clean these jig heads up and we'll uh, start painting them. And then we'll tie them. Well, these scissors work out real great cut the gate off. You, they can just follow the jig around. And these are Crescent brand. They're heavy duty scissors. But they work out real well for cutting the gate off. You can break it off. Sometimes it breaks off rough. Cut them or break them. Well, after you break, break the gate off, you get some flash, and uh, I just like to clean them up a little bit where you broke off the uh, gate. I use my pocket knife. Years ago, I had a little grinder set up to do this just to clean this up. 
I didn't wear gloves years ago, but I'm doing it now. Nobody knew lead was that bad for you then. So I scrape it a little bit with a pocket knife, clean them up so they're nice and smooth so when you paint them. They look nice, but you don't have to be that fussy. The fish don't care. Like I said, we used to make them and sell them. Well, the next step is to paint the jig heads. And for the last year or so, I haven't painted them, I've been powder coating them. And it works out pretty good. And you can get some inexpensive uh, powder coating at Harbor Freight, and you just need a heat gun, and that's it. First you warm them up a little bit, then dip it in the powder coat material, then back to the heat gun until it gets nice and glossy. And that finish holds up uh, real well. The only thing you got to be careful of, don't dip the powder coat all the way up to the area we're going to tie the bucktail on because it'll get real glossy and it slips right off when you're tying. It's really hard to tie it on. So just dip it up to the shoulder right here and then you'll, you'll be all right. Well, let's turn the heat gun on and start. Then I use this ice pick to clear the uh, eye of the hook out. And back to the heat gun. And you can hold on to the hook here it doesn't get hot the heat doesn't seem to transfer up to the hook it's not even warm so you don't need gloves to do this Check one, see how tough they are. Looks pretty good. The paint won't hold up that. Lacking on the vice. Didn't chip it off. I'm really surprised. Well, the next step is to tie the uh, bucktail onto the jig head. And what you're going to need is a bucktail, of course. This is one I've been using. Still got some. Uh, hair left in it so we can make some more out of it and they come in a package like this this came from a fly fishing shop and it must be fairly old because it was only four dollars and the last one I bought I think was six dollars which isn't too bad you can get a lot of bucktail jigs out of this one tail and I like to add a little bit of color to them sometimes you can use all white that works but you just put a little bit of a color and sometimes we dye them ourselves with a fabric dye. So you can buy a tail and cut it up and dye a little bit of it so you don't have to buy too many tails if you're not going to tie a lot of jigs. But we got this chartreuse one and that came from the fly shop. And yellow. And this one we dyed ourselves. This is a, you know, obviously red. And you're going to need some thread. And the thread that we used to use was this uh, rod wrapping thread these large spools of it and it was size E but we haven't been able to get this anymore and yet I tend to use more white than color and I ran out of all the white like I still got a couple extra spools of this so I found this thread here and it's a nylon thread same kind of thread and I think this is a poultry thread and it's not coated with anything it's not wax coated and it's the same diameter so this works out pretty good and you want a nice strong thread because you're going to pull on them fairly hard when you're tying them. And you also want a pair of decent scissors to cut the bucktail. And you'll need a razor blade. And every time I do bucktails, I use a new razor blade. This is to trim the hair. You'll see when we're tying them. Well, what you do first is pick up your bucktail and you cut a little bundle of hair out of it. And after you start doing a few, you get a feel of how uh, much hair you want. 
And it's usually, when you're done, maybe a bundle like quarter inch, three sixteenth, something like that. And you can just set it down. And I like to put a little color in them. And yellow's pretty popular. When we used to tie them up north, yellow was uh, kind of popular for the weak fish up there and the stripers. Then we do red, chartreuse, other colors. You put your uh, colored piece, I always put it on top. Make a jig with a hook up and shove it in your hair and grab your thread and start wrapping it around the hair and wrap it back on top of the other wrap and start pulling a little tighter all the time. Get nice and tight. Then put a, a few half inches in it. Pull it tight. When you pull it tight, pull it kind of slow. Pull it real fast, it might slide off the uh, towards you towards your hook. Okay, that's three, that's good. And take your razor blade and trim it. Trim all that excess hair. You go through a lot of razor blades, but that's okay. Every time I tie a bunch, I get a new razor blade. Then go back to your thread and just start wrapping. Wrap forward towards the uh, head of the bucktail, the head of the jig, and back down towards that shoulder that we poured. Is it the shoulder? It's on the uh, jig head, and get down the edge of the shoulder. And wrap down onto your hook. You can pull it a little tight. Pull it tight. And that'll make the hair spray out. It'll come out with a little bit. So when you fish with it, it'll breathe. Then just wrap it forward. If you want to, you can try to get them neat, nice, neat wraps. Right up to the head of the bucktail. Take a look at it. You might see a hair come out or so. You can trim them later. And I took maybe, put about four half inches in it. You, if you know how to do a whip finish, you can do a whip finish. But this is as easy for me because we're going to put a, a coating on it on the threads. And that, uh, that'll keep it in place. I do four in case a knot comes loose. Well, it, you know, we got the extra knots on there. You know, it wants to come off. Now you just uh, trim that wrap, that thread off. Grab your other end. You can call this the die again, whatever you want to call it. And sometimes on these bucktails, the one I'm using for the white, the hair is a lot shorter than the yellow, so I'm going to trim some of that yellow off. See other hairs, you can trim them off. And 
maybe I'll do a red one this time. This is real short hair, this one. Yeah, some reason they're always a little different. Maybe we use the red thread also. This is that uh, rod wrapping thread, and it's a size E. I'll look on this spool, the stuff I got, and I'll put it in the description or uh, on the video of actually what size it is. It's a, I think it's a upholstery like sewing thread, but it's nylon. I always use nylon. I don't know where other stuff works, and it's, you can pull, and it's really strong. But, uh, so, yeah, that's very nice. But I had quite a few spools of the white, but I used that all up because we used white mostly. Now I got yellow and red. I got a new spool. I got plenty of that in the original the size E uh, rod wrapping thread. That's just a perfect size. And the stuff I bought now, it's, I think it looks like exactly the same size. It looks like the same thing. Except it was cheaper than rod wrapping thread. Cut a little short, you can just fill the front up with, uh, with the threads. That's just gonna go back to that shoulder. And get there and pull it tight. Right. Makes them look a lot nicer. And like I said, in the water, it sort of breathes more. Bucktail breathes anyway, rather than use it. You can use nylon, but you don't catch as many fish as you do with bucktail. The thing with nylon, though, if you're catching Spanish mackerel and all, they don't eat it up like bucktail. You'll get a couple misses, strikes. You bring it in, you don't have any more hair. But if you're making your own, it doesn't matter. Just save the uh, jig head. You can just cut it off, cut the thread off, and retie them. Yeah, that's what we do. So we got a couple of uses out of them. Maybe sharpen the hooks again, but a lot of times we'll get a few strikes when we catch a fish. We got to change bucktails. So if that's what they want that day, yeah, that's what we use. And we troll with these a lot also with the uh, mackerel bellies. Now, a lot of times they like these bucktails. We make these bucktails ourselves, and it's tipped with a piece of uh, Spanish mackerel belly. And the same deal, about 12 inches of wire with a small swivel. And it, with the, uh, you got the belly on it. And this is a nice wide gap hook, which we like. And we catch kings on these and Spanish and, you know, lots of other fish.
This year was a bad year though for mackerel and, uh, where we fish. They had over at Swanee, the area we mackerel fish had a red tide. And when you get that, it seems like everything leaves, everything dies. There was no bait fish, nothing. So we're waiting for the spring. There you go, red bucktail with the red thread. Well, now it's time to put the uh, finish on the threads. And what I use is this uh, pour on, you know, glossy, it's an epoxy finish they use on furniture. You know, they get that thick, uh, nice clear gloss and it works out pretty good. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of that and we'll put that on the uh, threads. It takes overnight to set and it'll set up, but it works really good. You know, the macro, they don't bite through the threads with this one. Well, you just put it on with a small brush. And you go right up to the uh, bucktail itself. Right up there. I go up about like a little less than an eighth of an inch. And that way it'll hold it on there a little better. It keeps the bucktail on better. That epoxy gets in there. But this stuff does a good job. I never had a fish bite through it yet. Now we'll check on them in the morning after they uh, harden up. Well, the finish is set up on the threads and it's good and hard. And you see how you tie it in tight to that hook and it makes that hair uh, spread out. And when that goes through the water, it sort of breathes more and the fish will hit it. A lot better than if you use a nylon for the uh, hair, nylon hair. That doesn't breathe at all, it just sort of comes out straight. And these will catch a lot more fish. They're not as durable as nylon, but uh, they fish better. Well, if you're interested in making your own bucktail jigs, it doesn't take a lot to get started. You don't need a lead pot, you don't need a mold. You can buy pre-made uh, jig heads like these ones that aren't painted and these are pretty good ones they came from walmart they got a nice wide gap hook you can, and you can find other ones other ones and what, what, what do you need you just need a bucktail some thread and you can even use super glue on the threads some paint and uh that's about it a scissor razor blade and you can make your own jig heads and one bucktail will make a lot of bucktails <laughs> It sounds funny. Bucktail make a lot of bucktails. But anyway, it will. So if you enjoy this video, we'd appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And thanks a lot for watching.